Do you work with remote clients as either a colorist, editor, or post-production artist, and need a reliable long distance method so they can see your work live? Well, let's jump into setting up DaVinci Remote Monitor to solve this problem. So for the host, there's a few requirements. The first requirement for the host, and that likely is you if you're watching this video, is you must have the studio version of DaVinci Resolve installed. If you don't already have the studio version, what are you waiting for? It's a great deal, it's totally worth the cost. Even if you're only buying it for this feature, totally worth it. Second, for anyone on Linux or Windows like me, you're gonna need to use a RTX NVIDIA GPU. I've heard that AMD support might be down the pipeline, but this is the current limitation for now. Finally, you will need a Blackmagic Cloud account, which uh, you can sign up for at no cost. You can find the website in the description. It wasn't super obvious at first where you're supposed to click, so I've highlighted that on the screen. On the client side, you're gonna to need to pick if you want to view it from a computer or an iOS device. If you want to use a laptop or desktop, you are still required to have the studio version of DaVinci Resolve installed on that machine. And the same GPU requirements, as I mentioned during the host section, also apply here. Now, the DaVinci Remote Monitor app, it's, it's a standalone app, but it's included in the install of the studio version. Now, if you're on an iOS device like an iPad Pro, DaVinci Remote Monitor is a free standalone app that you can download from the App Store. You don't need to have the studio version if you're looking at it on an iOS device. Um, like the host, uh, you need to have a Blackmagic Cloud account, and that's free to sign up for. So now I'm gonna walk through how to set up a remote monitoring session. And the way I'm gonna do this is my main desktop is gonna be the host machine, so I'll demo that. And then I'll also demo how to set up the client side on my uh, MacBook Air here. To start, you're gonna go up to Workspace and then select Remote Monitoring. Now I'm already signed in, but if you haven't signed in, this is where you're gonna to need to do it. Do you see how we get a new icon in this lower right portion of the screen? This is where you can access the uh, Remote Monitor tab at any time. The next thing we need to do is select a video codec for the session. Now, uh, some of the wisdom that is given is if you want maximum compatibility, it's often best to stick with the H.264 8-bit. However, I have found that uh, oftentimes that's way too compressed for my preference. So if possible, I tend to start with one of the 10-bit options here and then back up if there's some sort of compatibility issue. So usually I'll start with the H.265 uh, uh, 420 10-bit. When it comes to selecting the bitrate, I have yet to see some good guidance from Blackmagic on what you should set this to. Uh, generally, uh, I've been setting this to somewhere around 50 because that's a fairly conservative estimate given most um, internet service provider options. Uh, but if you're encountering issues, it's probably best to lower that down. There is an option to automatically accept connections. So this is when someone tries to join, it automatically lets them in. Personally, I don't like checking this. And this comes from one of the first times I tried using this with a client. I sent them the, uh, I sent them the session code ahead of time. And as I was doing some last minute prep, I noticed that they had joined and they were watching me do my last minute prep inside Resolve. And that just felt a little funny to me. So uh, I like not checking that so I can start the session, send them this little code, and then when they join, you'll see a little request here that you can accept or deny. Most of the time, you'll just want to accept. One other thing that I'll mention is it's often nice to go up to Workspace Data Burn-In and enable the uh, time code for the project so it runs at the bottom. And then if you also want to, you can add maybe your business logo to hover in the bottom corner. I like adding these two elements because the time code is helpful for them to diagnose. If things, are, if things look like they're freezing on their end, they can easily see the time code so they'll know whether or not um, the, the stream is frozen. And then uh, the logo is just a nice little bit of a professional addition. Um, at any time, if for some reason they want to see something in that corner, it's really easy, of course, just to jump to data burn-in and pull that logo out. One limitation I'll mention, if you do want to use one of your logos, there's no way to scale this graphic. So it's going to be as large as the number of pixels. So I, uh, I took my logo and shrunk it down until it's only 100 pixels by 100 pixels and then uh, implemented it here. Just something to be aware of. One last thing to check is to hop over into your project settings and take a look at the color management output color space. If this is set to something strange, uh, there's a chance that your stream is gonna get tagged incorrectly. So just make sure that it's to whatever standard your monitor is calibrated. In most cases, this is gonna be Rec. 709 uh, Gamma 2.4.
Now let's talk about the client side. This all begins with finding a good calibrated monitor. And uh, I'm using my laptop for this example simply because my calibrated monitor is hooked up to my desktop. But keep in mind that whatever this client's gonna be viewing it on, it needs to be calibrated to the SDR standard. Uh, so the SDR standard normally is a Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 calibration. So let's launch that. We're gonna launch the uh, DaVinci Remote Monitor app. Now I've already signed in, but if you haven't signed in, this is where you would do it. Since I have some clients who aren't super techie, I actually have a secondary client account that I've already created that if it feels like um, sending them to create their own Blackmagic account seems like a pain, uh, I'll just give them kind of a, a spam email that I created and a pretty simple password for them to log in. After that, they can paste their session code in and select their output device. So I'm just using the built-in screen for this example, but if you have one of the uh, output video cards, you know, often we use those to get a really nice, clean, reliable signal to a calibrated monitor. So if you have like a Decklink card, you can actually use that Decklink as the output device, uh, which is an incredible option if you have that available. From there, you hit join, and uh, this is gonna wait for the host to accept. So I'm gonna hop over to my host computer, accept it, and then they are in. So now let me give you a couple tips and tricks that I've just found very practical as I've been using this tool for a number of months now. First, when you're running a remote session, have some sort of secondary device near you that you can preview what the client's gonna be seeing. So usually I'll have either my laptop or an iPad just sitting on the desk next to me that is remoting in just to see what the client's perspective will be. If possible, I will also route that through a VPN. That way we're kind of getting that long distance experience, right? The signal getting sent out into the internet and kind of coming back. It's not all right here locally being seen. This is really helpful because if the client is experiencing some sort of issue, you can see, is it an issue on my end as the host or is it maybe you know an internet issue on their end? This allows you to help find those issues before the client does, which is always a win. Now, every once in a while, I've encountered a bug where the client can't seem to connect. And uh, there's a couple steps that I've done to solve this issue. First, uh, close Resolve, open it back up, and see if that solves the issue. Second, restart the computer, because that's always a good troubleshooting call. And then, if both of those aren't working, you know how I mentioned that uh, not all these codecs uh, listed in the remote monitor section are compatible with every device? Try selecting a uh, slightly more compatible version. Maybe go back to H.264, uh, the 8-bit version. Although I, I don't prefer that as my primary choice, uh, sometimes that will solve the compatibility issues. Also, in very, very rare cases, um, someone might have a firewall issue going on. And this might be on your end or their end. If you're like a post house or a more corporate environment, there is a chance that there's some really strict firewall rules going on. I would suggest talking with whoever uh, was in charge of setting up that, uh, probably an IT professional. Finally, the last issue that you run into is just lag. And I found that the best way to help with lag on these uh, remote sessions is to first off, just let them know that lag may occur. So set the expectation early. Uh, what also can help lag is make sure that you have a hard wire ethernet connection um, to your internet. So don't be doing this over Wi-Fi from your end. Have a, a plugged in ethernet connection. If they can do that as well, that is a huge help, but I find that that's a little less reliable um, on the client end. So uh, start with yourself and uh, just let them know that if they are experiencing lag, that's maybe one step they can take to help reduce it on their end. So there you go. There is a look at how to set up and use a remote monitor workflow on your projects. Uh, do you have any questions about this process? Uh, make sure to let me know down in the comments. Also, I am going to be producing a follow-up video on this of how to actually do this with an iPad Pro because I find that iPad Pros are a very popular option. So I'm gonna be releasing a second video on how to specifically set up iPad Pros for remote color review. It is not a perfect solution, but in a pinch, it can be really helpful, especially when you have that client that doesn't have any good calibrated review device. All right, I'll see you in the next one.